This is our second video of the skeletal system. Today we're going to talk about joints. So first thing we're talking talk about are the different kinds of joints. So what is a joint? This is an area of junction or union between two or more bones, also called an articulation. There's three different types. There's fibrous, cartilaginous, and synovial. So a fibrous joint that is an immovable, also known as synarthrosis. So it's is held together by fibrous connective tissue. So for example, the suture between bones of the skull. So when you're born, your skull is in different pieces that are held together around your brain. And when as you grow, those bones actually fuse together to create uh, fibrous or immovable joints. So next is cartilaginous, which is slightly movable, or amphiarthrosis. These are joints connected by cartilage. So for example, the joints between bodies of the vertebrae. So like the picture on the right. Next is synovial, or freely movable, or diarthrosis. Dia meaning through. Arthro again is joint. Osis is condition. So for example, joint cavity with synovial fluid like the knee. That is an example of a synovial joint. So structure of the synovial joints. You have your joint cavity that contains a synovial fluid to lubricate the joint. You have ligaments. These are what actually hold the joints together. And then you have joint capsule that strengthens and protects the joint. So this is continuous with the periosteum. So again, peri means around, osteo, bone, um, that is just a word ending. So it connects with the periosteum of the bone. Then you have articular cartilage, which covers the ends of the bones. This prevents the bones from actually rubbing together when the joint's moving, causing lots of pain. And then you have a bursa, which is a fluid-filled sac near the joints, which helps to cushion and protect the joints and the surrounding areas. So here in the picture, you can see the articular cartilage right in here. You can see the joint cavity. You can see the um, fibrous joint capsule, which kind of holds everything together. And then you have your ligaments, which connect bone to bone to help stabilize the actual joint. So types of synovial joints. We have gliding, which is the bone surfaces slide over one another. So for example, your wrist. That's an example of a gliding joint. Next, you have hinge, which allows movement in one direction, changing the angle of the bones at the joint. So for example, just like the hinge of the door, you can only move the door in one direction, just like your elbow. Next is a pivot. This allows rotation around the length of a bone. So for example, the joints between your first and second vertebrae. So this allows you to shake your head left to right. You know, when you say no, it allows you to pivot between your first and second vertebrae. Next is condyloid. This allows movement in two directions. So for example, the uh, joint between the wrist and the forearm bones. Next is saddle. This is like a condyloid joint, but with a much deeper articulating surface, so a much deeper joint. So for example, joints between the wrist and the metacarpals and the metacarpal bone of the thumb. So allows your thumb really sits in the articular space uh, of your wrist bones. Next is ball and socket. This allows movement in many directions around a central point. So for example, your shoulder and your hip. You can move it up, down, left, right, all around, just like a ball and socket, like the picture on the right. Next is movements of the synovial joints. So first is flexion. These are all, when we're talking about movements, it's between, you know, at a joint, the different types of movements that are allowed. So first is flexion, so that's bending motion that decreases the angle between the bones. So over here with your arm, your arm would start at an extended uh, position and then flex up, thinking flexing your biceps, making it shorter, decreasing that angle. Next is extension, so then releasing, relaxing your biceps, letting it go back down. So you're extending your arm. That is called extension. And then we have abduction and adduction. So abduction is movement away from the midline of the body. So here, moving away from the midline. Midline is right in the middle of the body. And then you have adduction, which is moving it towards the midline of the body. So think about it, break it up. Ab, when you're abducted, you're being taken away, so moving away from the midline. And then adduction, you're adding it to the middle of the body. 
Next is circumduction. This is a combination of the above movements. This allows for motion to make a or motion to make a circle with the arm. Just think of circum circle around. Next is rotation, twisting of a bone on its own axis. So for example, turning the head to say no. So shaking your head from left to right. That is considered rotation. Next is supination and pronation. Those are opposites. So supination is turning the palm up. Think about making a cup with your hand. You have put your soup in your cup. That's supination. Pronation is turning the palm backwards. So next we have inversion and eversion. These are typically associated with your ankles. So inversion, you're inverting, turning the sole of the foot inward, in, moving inward. And then eversion, turning the sole of the foot outward. <coughs> Excuse me, it's a lot easier to do inversion than it is eversion. Next is dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. So dorsiflexion is bending the foot upwards at the ankle and then plantar flexion is pointing the toes down. So think when you plant your foot, you point your foot down. Dorsi, think about pulling it up. So dorsi flexion, you would release the gas pedal. Plantar flexion, you plant it down, pointing your toes down onto the gas pedal to make the car go. Next, we have different disorders of the joints. First is dislocation. This is a dearrangement of the parts of the joint, meaning your joint actually comes apart. Next is a sprain. This is a wrenching of the joints with a rupture or rupture or tearing of the ligaments. Like this is a picture of an ankle injury of a sprain. The ligaments on the side were torn or ruptured, causing the bleeding and the swelling. Next disorder is arthritis. This is inflammation of the joints. So you have osteoarthritis. There's two different types: osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Oste osteoarthritis. This is a degenerative joint disease that occurs in elderly persons due to normal wear and tear. So degenerative meaning it kind of happens, things are degrading, things are breaking down. So over time, just due to normal wear and tear, constantly walking, moving around, running, exercising, that kind of thing, can create osteoarthritis. Next is rheumatoid arthritis, or RA. This is a crippling condition characterized by swelling of the joints of the hands, feet, and other body parts as a result of, an in, of inflammation and overgrowth of a synovial membrane in other joint tissue. So basically the joints, a lot of times it affects the fingers, those joints in between your knuckles basically start swelling. Swelling causes them to deform. Very crippling and very painful as well. Next is septic, which is an infectious arthritis. This is when bacteria spreads to involved joint tissue, usually by the way of the bloodstream. So, for example, tuberculosis or TB of the spine is referred to as Pott's disease. This is whenever the bacteria gets in within the joint, affects the joint tissue, and starts to cause lots of swelling and um, just causes all that infection to grow and really start eating away at the tissue. Next is gout. This is due to a metabolic disturbance. This is accumulation of uric acid. They form crystals which are deposited as masses about the joints and other parts of the body. Most common is in the big toe. You'll basically, if you can imagine a bunch of very sharp crystals, um, you know, sharp needles in your joints, and every time you move them, those sharp crystals are just kind of, you know, tearing away and, you know, causing lots of pain. So backache, what can cause this? Lots of people get backache all the time. Sometimes it goes away, sometimes it comes back, but what can cause it? Many things. One, diseases of the vertebrae, such as tumors, can cause backache. Disorders of the intervertebral disc, so the actual cartilage between the discs, can cause back pain. Abnormalities of the lower vertebrae or of the ligaments. So disorders involving abdominal pelvic organs or those in the spaces behind the peri, uh, peritoneum. So basically organs within, you know, that are kind of along the spine. Also strains on the lumbar sacral joint or strains on the sacroiliac joint can also cause backaches. This now concludes our video about the joints.